Praveen Nair, CEO TNEGA, to the dais. Thank you everyone for patiently waiting for us. Welcome to day two of the Global Investors Meet 2024. I'm Ritika from the Tamil Nadu Technology Hub and I will be the host for the session. As the famous investor Warren Buffet once said, opportunities come in frequently. When it rains gold, put out the bucket, not the thimble. Today, we are here to put out our buckets to seize the opportunities that await us. I take immense pleasure in extending a warm welcome to the dignitaries we have with us. Honorable Minister Dr. PTR, Mr. Dheeraj Kumar IAS, Additional Chief Secretary, and the speakers who have gathered to share their insights. Thank you for gracing us with your presence today. I welcome you all once again on behalf of the entire ITNT team. To commence the program, I would like to invite Mr. Dheeraj Kumar IAS, Additional Chief Secretary to Government, Department of IT and DS, Government of Tamil Nadu, to deliver the opening remarks. Please, sir. Good morning to all of you. It's really quite encouraging to see the kind of a response to this session. So let me start with welcoming our Honorable Minister of IT and Digital Services, other <laughs> dignitaries on the dais, the professionals and experts from industry, academia, and government, ladies and gentlemen, and members of press. Welcome to this session, which is themed on Gen AI and Deep Tech, the game changer. I think among the many sessions and many topics that are being discussed today, that are being talked today, this is one of the most relevant and I am sure you will find it most interesting session also of Jim of 2024. Uh, friends, as we all know that generative AI has been there for a long time, starting in 1960s with its humble beginning as Eliza chatbot and then went through a lot of improvement and then suddenly we all started talking about it in a very big way uh, towards the end of 2022 with the advanced research which were done by OpenAI and Google and all that. So it became a buzz of the world. Wide application uses in different sectors, ticket marketing, conversational application, knowledge management, even designing of the chips and the drugs, all that. But then there are certain challenges like deep fakes, proprietary SIP. So all these are the issues which are associated with AI. And very closely related to AI is uh, deep tech, which finds its uses in very, very wide field from agriculture to aerospace to green energy, mobility, so a lot of uses. And when we are talking about deep tech, we have to talk about the contribution being made by the startups, their important role in exploring the different technology like AI, biotech, quantum computing, robotics, and all that. And when I am talking about startups, in deep tech, I must mention about ITNT hub of government of Tamil Nadu. Uh, probably at least some of you may be aware of uh, this institution being set up 
last year in May 2023 as a hub of uh, incubating the innovation and they are playing a unique role in Tamil Nadu of uh, promoting innovation in deep tech. Some of the themes on which they are working are really quite interesting, like developing reusable PP sets, satellites for clearing debris in the space, and many more such things. I think a visit to our pavilion would really help you to understand, and maybe a visit to ITNT Hub itself will be quite interesting to you. As far as this 90-minute session is concerned, it's really packed and full with a lot of good kind of knowledge and interest. So our Honorable Minister will be giving the keynote address, which will be followed by a small, short Q&A. Then we will have a fireside chat by experts of the field, and thereafter a panel discussion with the eminent personalities of this field. So I am sure that these 90 minutes, you will find it very interesting. It will enrich us and give us much more clarity on the way forward that we have to take in our organization, in our society, in our state, and maybe in the world as a whole. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for setting the tone for the event. Your words have inspired us to think big and aim high. Next, we have our very own Ms. Vanita Venugopal, the Chief Executive Officer of Tamil Nadu Technology Hub, who will share a special address. Ma'am, the floor is yours. Uh, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I was asked to set the context. I think my job is already done. I think uh, <clears throat> Secretary Sir had done a fantastic job of kind of laying the land of what the next 90 minutes we are going to expect. But nevertheless, um, this very morning, I'm filled with gratitude as I thank our Honorable Minister, uh, Dr. Palnivel Thyagarajan, sir, um, IT Secretary, Dheeraj Kumar, IAS, sir, MD, um, TNEG, MD, Praveen Nair, IAS, sir, Elcott, MD, Anish Nair, sir, and my other HODs who have gathered along with your team to support ITNT, which is a <clears throat> very nascent organization that was just conceptualized seven months ago with its inauguration at the heart of Anna University, the academic institution. And I'm privileged to drive the organization into the success of innovation and incubation in the deep tech space for the government of Tamil Nadu. So thank you again, everyone. So following the groundbreaking, um, release of chat GPT in November 2022, artificial intelligence has drawn immense attention on the global stage. With an unexpected surge in um, applications, product launches, organizations worldwide are racing towards uh, catching up with the AIs and how they can apply that in their uh, businesses. However, as Sir rightly said, amidst this intensity, many are concerned with the risks of AI it poses, and also they call for establishments of some rules and regulations and protocols to safeguard it while it is still at its infancy. So having said that, uh, to cage this rapidly evolving landscape, to the, today we have curated this event so we can come together to share perspectives through a keynote address from none other than our charismatic leader, uh, Minister Sir, uh, scintillating fireside chats by industry pioneers, and a thought-provoking panel discussion which will touch upon ethical, regulatory, and business dimensions of AI. Their collective expertise, diverse backgrounds, and varying opinions aim to assist you in making informed decisions regarding the implementation of AI in your organization. Secondly, the government regulators are faced with the challenge of catching up with the rapid growth of AI. How do we make sure that AI could be used uh, in how we do analysis of data in our government data system? Making sure that you know, we are safeguarding the cyberspace, the online community, and the metaverse, resulting in a need to shift the attention towards understanding generative AI, its applications, and its boundaries, so that we can establish policies to support that. 
with our IT department spearheading the new AI policy for the state and ITNT as the implementation agency where we'll set up the state of the art AI in collaboration with Indian as well as global partners. Without much further ado, I proudly present ITNT Hub, a two minute video. Thank you. Thank you for addressing the audience, Mom. Your words have set the stage for an exciting day ahead. I recollect a quote from long ago. Thomas Edison once said, I have not failed. I have just found 10,000 ways that won't work. That's quite optimistic, isn't it? We have something to show you what's brewing in it and Hub that we strongly believe will work. Cue the video, please. ITNT, Tamil Nadu Technology Hub, established to harness Tamil Nadu's vast technology capability to build a thriving global innovation ecosystem by strengthening the R&D and innovation landscape, industry academia collaboration, and international partnerships. We aim to be among the top 10 innovation hubs globally and help Tamil Nadu achieve a trillion dollar economy by 2030. ITNT focuses on deep tech and emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence, big data, ML, DL, NLP, augmented reality, virtual reality, metaverse and IoT, edge computing, robotics. The key sectors we focus on include climate tech, space tech and aviation, creative tech, cyber security, healthcare and life sciences, smart cities and transportation. Our core programs cover these areas. The visionary initiatives of it &T ignite the spark of innovation in every corner, nurturing a collaborative ecosystem where ideas take flight, supported by a strong global investor network. We stand firmly supported by a powerful alliance, the visionary government of Tamil Nadu, the government of India, renowned universities and industry titans united in their belief in the transformative power of innovation. To strengthen international ties, IT Hub has formed collaborations with various countries. ITNT is marching towards making Tamil Nadu the innovation factory of the world. Summing up, we are not just about programs, we are about possibilities. Together, we are building the future. It is now my honor to invite the Honorable Minister, Dr. Palanivel Thiagarajan, Department of IT and DS, to deliver the keynote address. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon to everybody. Thank you very much to the organizers of the event, particularly our IT and CEO. I acknowledge here the additional Chief Secretary of the Department, Riddhi Rajkumar, the many heads of departments of all the different verticals in the IT department, some of the other senior IAS officers in the room, all the innovators and learned people on the subject from whom we are to hear on the rest of the session, and all of you, ladies and gentlemen. There's a place when ministers should speak and there's a place when they should listen. And something like innovation in deep tech and AI, there's not really that much for ministers to speak. So I'll try and keep my comments brief so we can get more time with the experts. As the secretary said, in some sense, this is the nth coming of AI, the third or the fourth. I remember Deep Blue, I remember the chatbots. I'm old enough to have seen many of these come and go. But what I think makes it different this time, other than the obvious results we see and the quality of the content generated through the generative AI, is that 
we have such vast amounts of data already available, at least in some languages in some countries, and the possibilities that that kind of data can be created and stored at relatively you know, marginal cost of zero. And therefore, that the available content for a machine to learn, for a program to learn, is infinite. Combined with the fact that these days, access to really high levels of computing power is quite democratized through the cloud. And even startups, for short periods of time, can harness huge amounts of computing power at some reasonable cost, what would otherwise cost hundreds of millions of dollars to build regularly, can be hired for an hour or a day. I think the combination of these has really unleashed the creativity and the whole approach to how machines and human beings interact. I say many times that my PhD dissertation back in 1990 or 91 was about understanding human cognition and helping to design computer interfaces with that understanding. That is to say, we want to try and make the machine more accessible to the person. And that was the extent of computing power at that time, the average person, the one that doesn't need to be a specialist. We have reached the other end of that spectrum today where we are training the machines how to be like humans. And we now have the capability of doing that. Obviously, that opens up a whole lot of possibilities. And to touch upon briefly the nature of this double-edged kind of evolution, A, in job creation versus job destruction. I think clearly many jobs that were done by human beings will be much, much better and faster done and more reliably done by these machines. In my old industry of banking, the amount of work that was done post the mainframe processing of all the reported transactions that required hundreds of human beings to do, uh, AI can probably eliminate all those jobs altogether. And yet, the creation of the content and the creation of the machine learning programming in English language, or in our case in Tamil language and in the regional languages, is going to create a whole lot of new jobs that we have not had before and provide the possibility of even leapfrogging were we to have the right ecosystem to foster that kind of innovation. Of course, we also see that as much as generative can replace human beings, you can also do a lot of deep fakes. And so authentication of content and origination of source is going to be very important. We have seen election manipulation in many countries through uh, AI level of deep fakes and content manipulation. Somebody gifted me a book, and I was just reading it uh, earlier, about how in the Russia-Ukraine war, the battle for Kiev was effectively won by a bunch of programmers who got a bunch of drones together and were able to go and bomb out the advanced parts of a 40-kilometer-long convoy of uh, Russian vehicles in such a way that the entire road was blocked and effectively changed what was otherwise sure defeat into eventual withdrawal of the Russian forces because then they used the same technology to go and bomb out the supply chain. And so the, you, you had troops stuck with no way to go forward and not enough supplies to stay where they were. So this is the disruptive power because what they could do is train these drones based on some of the camouflage they had detected to identify where other likely camouflaged uh, vehicles and supplies were. So you look at all of this together and I think this is going to be surely one of those inflection points uh, in my career. I've seen two or three of these, uh, the widespread advent of converting analog and digital signals, which led to the ERP revolution and the automation of factories, the internet and email, which led to a different kind of connectivity, the internet of things, which led to a different level of automation and efficiency. And this is probably even more impactful than all of that together. As far as the government is concerned, I would say broadly there are three areas we're focused on when it comes to deep tech and AI. The first and by far the most important to somebody like me who comes from a social justice philosophy and the equity and inclusion agenda to public life is that we can change the way government functions. We can remove a lot of the human elements and the disruption that 
bad human elements can create in processes. And we should be able to make it so inclusive that even the lowest level of education with voice interaction should be able to get resolution of their requests or needs from the government without having to worry about, you know, running from pillar to post and seeing 10 different officers. So the way government functions and the way government interacts with citizens, we hope will be our primary target for where we can apply these kinds of technologies and improve. Of course, part of government's job is to facilitate or create that kind of ecosystem where entrepreneurs and creative people can facilitate growth and, and help grow the, uh, the employment, which is so vital for us as we reap our demographic dividend. And I think in the case of Tamil Nadu, where we have fallen a bit behind other states or other cities, at least in perception and branding, uh, this technology and this paradigm shift offers us the opportunity to leapfrog some of the more traditional players and create a center of excellence or an ecosystem of excellence, not even a center, around AI and deep tech in Tamil Nadu and use that and the brilliant uh, and very talented and the huge magnitude of engineers and, and scientists that Tamil Nadu graduates every year to actually leverage the benefits of our education system and get jobs and growth. And then, of course, though it's very hard for states to regulate things at a you know, technological level, it's an international business in some sense, it's a national policy making, but to have inputs uh, in our own way into the regulation and responsible use of such technologies and to have uh, our uh, responsible, um, you know, our, our duties to the citizens properly uh, input through these technologies, especially as we fear about the quality of democracy deteriorating in general. So I think with those objectives, uh, I'm here to learn as much as everybody else. And so I won't say much more. Uh, it's a very exciting time uh, for us, for the world, for the technology, for the young people. And I hope that in the next uh, 75 minutes or so, we'll all come away from this uh, much more enlightened and with a lot of uh, thought-provoking inputs. And I thank you once again for coming. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That was pretty insightful. And thank you for explaining how AI is shaping up the present as well as the future. As mentioned by our secretary, Mr. Dheeraj Kumar IAS, sir, we would like to open the floor for a few questions. Hi, sir. Such a pleasure seeing you today. I'm Samir Kudur from the US India Business Council. My question to you is, uh, as you know, India today holds a presidency for the global partnership on AI. So how big is the role of the states in discussions around GPA presidency? And uh, what are the things as far as regional languages are concerned that you can perhaps put across to the central government in order to like, you know, incorporate these ideas? I must confess that we have at least not officially had any interaction yet with the government of India. So it's news to me, what you're telling me is news to me. Uh, of course, we have some of our very fine officers now serving in, in Delhi and in, uh, in, among others, my old finance secretary, Mr. Krishnan, is the Métis secretary. So we'll follow up with him. I, I don't have any insight yet. But I will say that part of the issue with uh, regional languages is that the data set and the uh, existing engines in English are so far advanced that it's going to take a bit of work for us. I mean, we have lots of people, we have a lot of history of the language, we have lots of data as a government, but to get all these into a digitized, machine learnable, and in many cases, voice learnable format is probably going to be one of the big uh, manual tasks, or, and then even that some can be automated. I've been looking at technologies for that, but to create those data sets will be the basis for getting that level of sophistication that now exists in English into the regional languages. And it's our job to do that because we all want to preserve our mother tongue and our language. Yeah. 
Hello, sir. So follow up question on that. Uh, is Tamil Nadu government taking any uh, proactive measures uh, here on your left? So is Tamil Nadu government taking any proactive measures? Uh, there are some uh, instances of small startups leveraging. Uh, also, there are uh, challenges, uh, concerns raised by the technologists. They say that the inscription or the, the you know, uh, the way the Tamil is uh, in the internet, it is not easily be uh, encoded into this machine language algorithms uh, or what you call that in tokens. So uh, is Tamil Nadu government talking on any of these areas? Yeah, I think uh, we are broadly in the process of uh, coming up with some uh, incentive and, and support policies in the, in the IT, uh, overall IT space. And certainly as the IT and T CEO mentioned around specific areas like AI, hopefully it's sooner rather than later. I must confess that the previous IT policy, which has been around for five or six years, five years, has not had any takers. So something is clearly wrong in the way that our uh, incentive policies were set up, despite the fact that we have seen phenomenal growth. As many of you know, last year, Chennai's office uptake was double the uh, annual average of the last few years before that. So something is a bit off in the way we are setting up these policies. We'll, we'll figure out. But in the case of AI companies, I think really it's about access to data, access to computing power, and then you know, the, the basics of anybody else to have a startup space, to have power, to have uh, decent, uh, you know, infrastructure. The second question I think is a bit more complex. Already there's an issue. Tamil Nadu was uh, one of the early members in the UU Code Consortium, and we had been moving to come up with uh, all the Tamil text to be machine readable and translatable uh, because of being compliant with UU Code for various reasons, and I don't want to talk politically here, but for various reasons, that was not quite done. And a lot of proprietary codes were used and a proprietary fonts were used. And so we have a lot of problems, at least with government content that needs to be fixed. But there's a very clear solution, right? If they're all uh, universal code, they can be translated easily and machine read easily and can the machine learning can be programmed easily. So the more we move towards the standard code, uh, fonts, uh, then I think we'll be better off. We had to do that for other reasons anyway. We'll probably push even harder now for these reasons. Uh, hello, sir. Sir, on, oh, here, on your left. Uh, uh, I should be the I, last I, question. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I'm sophisticated enough to answer a lot of questions. Why don't we get the experts here? So anyway. Yes, the last yeah, question. I'll keep it short. Yeah. First of all, big fan. And uh, we've read about how open, OpenAI uses a lot of water in its data centers. So if India were to, you know, develop one of its own and given the water shortages in the country and especially in a state like Tamil Nadu where we have faced a lot of water problems and like water based disasters, how would the government go about handling those kind of situations? Yeah, I, I'm not sure that AI data centers are going to consume a lot more water than generic data centers. Maybe I'm not well informed, but I think we have a broader problem, uh, which is, and I'll just take a crack at this without enough real depth. One is that data center power and water supply in general, I think needs to be looked at both from uh, you know clean energy as well as uh, our overall water utilization is very, very inefficient. Even if you take advanced countries, the amount of recycling they do and the amount of uh, kind of you know multi-use, multi-reuse, we don't do much of that at all. So our long-term solution has to be not that there's shortage of water, as many of you can tell, is that we don't store it, we don't recycle it, we don't. So we got we got a structural problem. I'm not sure it's unique for data centers. Data centers, I think, is more uh, important to us for other reasons. But I think uh, the cooling technology also is changing quite a bit. I've started to see a lot more air cooled rather than water cooled, and there's some you know in efficiencies in the design. So I think the broader perspective, at least from government of Tamil Nadu's uh, view, is that we want renewable uh, energy and reusable cooling uh, system uh, with, with a lot of uh, recycling cooling systems. And that will be true for data centers as much as it's true for any other you know, purpose. And certainly, I don't think we have a separate policy for AI data centers. 
compared to general data centers in general. I'm Gopi Balasubramaniam. I'm a CEO of a German startup uh, working on quantum computation. Um, my, my question is, I mean, quantum computing is a deep tech technology. And as you know, Europe and other Western countries have export regulations and restrictions. How does India and Tamil Nadu plan to tackle this um, in this context, uh, in this context? Thank you. I can only give you one instance because I don't know about India. Uh, uh, actually, I can say two things. One, the government of India has sponsored two uh, quantum quantum computing. One has already been allocated to the northeast. Natural. Um, the other uh, aspect is that one of the countries that does particularly well in uh, building quantum computers, as you may know, is Finland, you know, because of their old engineering uh, prowess and so forth. So actually, we are in discussions with them uh, for a few months now. Uh, hopefully, we'll accelerate those to see if we can procure one from Finland and use that to create uh, some space for startups in the utilization of that and see how we can uh, benefit the ecosystem with that. Due to time constraint, we will not be able to entertain any more questions. Sorry. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for, for your time. May I now request Mr. Dheeraj Kumar, IAS Additional Chief Secretary to Government, IT and DS Department, and Ms. Vanita Venugopal, the Chief Executive Officer of IT and D Hub, to felicitate the Minister. Thank you.